Alright, hi everyone. In this training what I'm going to show you is how you can create your own data lists for cold emailing. The real importance behind this is that you can of course purchase lists of emails from um, list providers or you could be using list databases like D7 Lead Finder or Apollo or other, other databases. But the challenges that you'll face when using lists that have, you've purchased or downloaded from databases is that you'll find that the, those lists are often emailed by your competitors. So the same people are being hit with multiple fairly similar offers. And B, there's no guarantee that those lists are entirely up to date. So they might have been compiled by the AI or the software engine a few months ago and, and still be out of date as people have moved on from companies and things. So there's a few reasons why you would want to be creating your own data lists. And I want to show you how you can do that using a few tools. Now, of course, this is quite time consuming. So it's something that you can delegate your virtual assistants or your team to be doing on your behalf. And you can be gathering as much data as possible. You could be gathering Instagram handles, Twitter handles, uh, Facebook links, all kinds of things. But I'm just going to be showing you today how you can find email addresses. Um, this is the first in a series of steps of setting up your cold email. So also be watching other training that I've provided on validating your email addresses, setting up and warming up e email inboxes and crafting outreach messages for cold email. But yeah, let's just jump into how we can start to compile our email lists. So on this worksheet, I've provided a blank lead record sheet. So just open that up. It's just a Google sheet and you can see that it's blank here. So we're going to start filling out, you know, a list of leads by company, a web link, their name and email address. But then we're also going to be finding several decision makers within the one company and then a LinkedIn profile link. And obviously it's it's endless what you could be finding for these for these leads but email address is the key bit for us here so we've got a list of different tools that you can use each of them works with a chrome extension so for each of the tools you can just go to the website and download the chrome extension and then they work variably some of them work on websites and others of them work on linkedin but by using a combination of them you can be finding email addresses now most of these, or pretty much all of these have paid versions and free, you can have a free trial. So if you're really keen to keep the cost down, you can actually just sign up for free trials for all of the tools and just circulate between them. And then when your free trial expires, you could even sign up with a new email address and keep going that way. So it's really dependent on you whether saving the money, going a little bit more freestyle is what you want or just paying the money and then handling one, one tool at a time. Okay, so let's start with a tool called Apollo. Now I've, I've referenced Apollo in terms of it being its own lead database. So Apollo is good. I quite like Apollo. I've used it a lot. I, I definitely recommend it. The pricing sits around 50 to a hundred dollars a month to use it, depending how many users that you want on the account. Um, again, you can just open up a Chrome extension. You can get all of these in the Chrome store. So here's the Chrome web store and here's your Apollo Chrome extension. Just pop it up here into your browser. You can usually find it all your extensions under this puzzle piece in your browser. So you can see that I've got Apollo, I've got Snob, I've got Find That Lead, um, I've got Hunter and Kendo, and I've got them all here in my browser. So I won't be installing them, I'm just showing you how to use that. Now one of the great things about Apollo is you can obviously use Apollo just to create your own lists, which saves you time from finding individual leads or you can build your own lists using Apollo's Chrome extension. And so it becomes a kind of double win in a way. And this is the reason why I show you Apollo first, because I think if, if you're just going to go with one tool, I would recommend Apollo because of its double function as a lead database and as a Chrome extension. So you can kind of use it for, for both purposes. If I just log into my account, I'll show you and then um, I'll just show you some lists and searches that we've built. Okay, this is your dashboard when you come into Apollo, but you can 
you can build your own search using different search terms and criteria. It looks a little bit like a sales navigator search. Go to some of my saved searches. Let's look at um, mining and manufacturing. So we found, you know, 44,000 are in the mining and marketing space within the United States, Canada and United Kingdom, mining and metals and manufacturing. So you can see that you build a list and then you get a whole, a whole uh, range of searches and then you can actually select a bunch of these and then you can export them. Um, let me sorry select the page and then you can actually export them as a CSV and be using both the email address and the LinkedIn profile so that's that's one really kind of speedy way of using Apollo the other way of using Apollo is if we go over to LinkedIn and this is the more bespoke way if you want to build your own list is you use LinkedIn sales navigator and the list that you're creating there and then you use the Apollo extension to build your list out. And that just gets around the fact that, you know, these leads might be hit up a lot by similar, you know, by your competitors because they're also using an Apollo database. But if you build your own search, there's less chance that they're being targeted by all your competitors. So if I go into my Sales Navigator Save Search and I, let's look at Cambridge here. United Kingdom. This is a search I've already created. So I have about 800 results of computer software companies within the United Kingdom, you know, with senior decision makers. Okay. Or actually with a HQ in the United Kingdom, but their geography is Cambridgeshire. So this is a super tight search for software companies. And say if I wanted to use um, Apollo, I can obviously activate my Apollo extension out here so I can launch window mode which gives me Apollo hovering on my window over the side here. You see it pops up over the side. But also already appealing here appearing here is is the Apollo Chrome extension kind of embedded into the the browser search. So you can see that I could just scroll down and be um, saving email addresses here and I can see that already that's a verified email address and I'm able to add it to a list inside of Apollo if I wanted to. So a one good step, a potential step you can go through within Apollo is you um, go and create a list. You could create a new list and say uh, LinkedIn as uh, saved leads, you know, Cambridgeshire software. My, my list pops up here. Let me just refresh my browser. And then if I go back to my sales navigator search, and if I want to um, find this guy's email address, all right, it looks like I found his email address now and I could add him to the list. Okay, now it's, it, okay, so it just took a second to refresh. I can just add him to my list and save him there. And so that way I am both finding his email address but also creating my own bespoke list that's not necessarily a predefined list in Apollo and I can just keep keep doing the same there find his email address it's found and then I can just add him to my list LinkedIn save leads um, now we can see in the Chrome pop-up on the right hand side the same leads have arrived over here so I could select and if I scroll down my LinkedIn page, I'll essentially be loading more of them. So I've got 15 contacts. Okay, what I might have to do is close down that extension, come back here and open up the extension again. Launch window mode for it to actually register the new list. Okay, so I'm gonna select all Get rid of that list. And here my LinkedIn save leads is here. So I've got my 15 contacts back because I've loaded them all and I'm just going to add them all to that list. And what I would find over here, if I refresh this page, is that I now have 15 leads in Apollo. But these are 
leads based on my, my LinkedIn search rather than leads based on an Apollo search. Um, so that's quite an efficient way of doing that. All right, so just for the sake of our exercise, let's use this list. I'm going to copy his email address. Or I could just use this little copy symbol here and just put him over in the first email. Okay, and his company is bloodypodes.io and it's platypodes.io and his name is Hamza okay now we've also got prospect A and prospect B now we want to find other decision makers within the company. So before we move on to the next guy, Jeff Foster, I'm actually going to leave like two lines because I'm going to find prospect A and prospect B. So let me go to the next guy. I'm just going to choose Jeff Foster. Let me copy his email across. So his name is Jeff. Oops, go down to Jeff Foster, his email address. The company is called Redgate Software and the web address is there. So it's Redgate Software. Okay. And let me find one more. So John Green, Adeptium Consulting. Let me copy his email across. Leave two spaces. John Green. Drop his email in. It's Adeptium Consulting and then Adeptium.com. All right, so you can see how we're kind of slowly building out um, our LinkedIn, uh, our, our database. So let's also grab their, their profile. So I'm just going to copy the link address and pop it in here. I'm just going to copy his link, his profile link address. Oops, did the wrong thing. Copy link address and pop it in here. And I'm going to copy his link address. And I'm going to pop it in here. All right. So now to find the other colleagues in the same company. The next step is to actually open up each person one by one and then just go to the company page. So we've got Adeptium, sorry, Platypodes. So I can open up the website, but I can see that there's two, only two employees on LinkedIn. So let me look at the two employees. So we've got Hamza and um, Amna. Now it looks like Amna is not really active on LinkedIn, but let's still uh, grab Amna's name, Amna Khalid, and we'll get an email address here. So it's not verified, so we wouldn't want to. We've just they've just guessed it based on the formula here. Amna Khalid. Let's go with platypodes. I've got Amna. And then it looks like there's no other person that we could add. So let's just leave that then. We will, let's copy the link address across. Okay. Um, since there's no one else there, let's just go back to the main search. And we could look for Jeff Foster. So what we could do is actually just open up the company name. Okay, uh, what we can do then is look at, there's 396 employees and there's 46 decision makers. 
So we just need to choose another two senior decision makers. So chief marketing officer, CFO, CTO, executive VP, CEO. So, all right, so I'm gonna get the CEO. I'm gonna copy the link address, Jacob Lamek. And I am going to grab his email address here. I'm just going to copy it. And obviously, it's just copy and paste that down, copy and paste that down. All right, we just need one more decision maker. So, how about maybe I might go with Chief Marketing Officer? So Kate Duggan, let's go with Kate. And let me grab her email address here. Okay, all right. And then uh, the reason we've got prospect A and prospect B here is like for Jeff, his colleagues are Jacob and Kate. And then for Jacob, his colleagues are Jeff and Kate. And then for Kate, her colleagues are Jeff and Jacob. And the reason we do that is that we, it allows us to kind of hyper personalize our outreach. So we can address Kate and say, hi, Kate, you know, notice that your chief marketing officer, we've also been in touch with your colleagues, Jeff and Jacob about this. So it allows them to immediately know, all right, you've, you've done some homework here um, and you know the other decision makers, but it also facilitates an internal referral if they are not the right person to talk to um, so, yeah, Kate might easily go, yeah, well, actually, this is a conversation to have with Jacob, not with me, or vice versa. Jacob could say, yeah, this is actually a conversation to have with Kate, not with me, or another decision maker in the company, because you've already talked about the fact that you've addressed a few people and you're trying to find the right person and, you know, talk about the, the offer that you're giving. All right, so that's a way of finding all the decision makers within a company. Let's go back to the original search. Actually, it's here. And we're going with John Green. So Adeptium, let's just open up Adeptium. And let's go to find all the decision makers. All right, there's only one decision maker there. So that's that's all we can do. Um, so that you can see now how we're, we're building our data list. I'm going to delete that row. Um, we weren't able to find two colleagues within Platypodes and we weren't able to find any other colleagues within Adeptium, but that's okay, still, still a good search. Okay, so let's go back to this and we've, we've looked at Apollo now and how you can use Apollo to either create a list or uh, create uh, a list from a search in Sales Navigator or to manually create a search. Let's look at something like Hunter.io. So again, just open up the website. Um, I'll close this down. And then you want to log in and create a free trial. And it'll also allow you to download the Chrome extension. Um, so just open up the Chrome extension from the Chrome store and install that into your, install that into your browser. Now, Hunter works more on websites. So let's have a look at how we could find these email addresses with Hunter. So if I open up Platypodes, let me activate the Hunter icon. Okay, so not really finding a lot here. Let's go to Redgate. See what Hunter says here. Okay, so what we've see how Hunter is it's searching a whole bunch of websites and web extensions to find decision makers and their formulaic email. So we've found 
product marketing manager, SQL developer, program manager, and there's up to 130 more. So you can see how the, a different tool like Hunter will use a website to find the email addresses. So if you just have a bunch of email addresses, uh, sorry, a bunch of web addresses for your ideal client, you could be using something like Hunter to find email addresses. There you go. Okay. So if we go on to Snov, Snov works similar to Apollo in that it's another Chrome extension. You can just add it to your browser. And there's paid and free versions of Snov. So you can log in and create your own account in Snov, uh, download the Chrome extension. So let's look at how Snovio works. Uh, if we go to and then open the company website, 3B Data. Let's open up the Snov extension. And so you can see how that would work to find a whole bunch of um, email addresses here. I, it's a bit obscured at the moment, but you can see that if you log in and have an account, it'll allow you to access those email addresses there. So Snovio has an email finder for website um, scraping, and it also has a LinkedIn prospector for LinkedIn search. But this is a little bit complicated. It's something that you need to an enable developer mode and install an extension. So if, if that's something you're very comfortable with doing, by all means do that. But um, yeah, it's, it's just very similar in function to what we've already looked at with Apollo. Okay, the next tool we can use is Kendo, which is a great tool that works on LinkedIn profiles as well. So again, you just create an account, um, grab the Chrome extension from the Chrome store there, and just add it to your, your Chrome browser. And then it works similar to Apollo working on LinkedIn profiles. So if we go to um, Ben Morris, let's open up his profile, let's open up Lottie's profile and then use our Kendo extension. You can see that Kendo is already um, telling me a, an inf email address here. So what I can do is just copy that and go over to my spreadsheet and I can add him Ben Morris and drop his email there. Now it's grabbing a personal email address, not a, a work email address, which is in this case fine. Uh, it's up to you whether you want to then maybe use Apollo or something to find a work email address, but often the fact that it's using his personal email means that he's definitely findable on email. And let's grab his company page. So let's okay, let's look at the other decision makers here. So we've got head of BD, head of information security, director of operations managing consultant, head of strategic development. So we can just choose who are the other decision makers that we're going to grab. I might grab James Bacolis and maybe um, Lizzie Hall, head of strategic development. So um, James Bacolis, you can see that his information is here. Let's grab his details, James Bacolis. And let's grab Lizzie's details as well. So we're getting a lot of personal emails here. Lizzie J. Hall. Okay, what's the company website? Ruby Data Security. Okay, so let's just copy that down.
and then obviously we fill out their colleagues information let's grab James's profile link pop it in here close it out grab Lizzie's profile link pop it here close it out and then we can grab Ben's profile link pop it here okay Okay, so you can see now how we're filling it out and keeping on adding to that. So we'll just close all these out. And we've got one more to look at. So we've looked at Kendo and how that works. And then let's look at the last one, which is Lucia, which is another extension that goes on, on onto LinkedIn. So again, you can open a free account add the Chrome extension and open up someone's LinkedIn profile. So let's look at Botties. Let's also look at his company page. I'm going to open the website. We're going to look at the decision makers. So let's grab Botties profile link. Botti Demonov. Let's grab the website address and just copy that down. Select 10x, copy that down. And then let's grab the decision makers. So we can also talk to the CTO and the board observer. Okay, there's only two, so let's just open them. Okay, so we've got Dimitri. Okay, so here's Lucia now, it's popping out. So no data for email, that's okay, but we've got his. So if we, if we couldn't find it for Dimitri, let's see if James has got anything. No, let's look at the bottom. Let's see if Lucia pops out. All right, so Lucia's not yielding us anything here, but let's look at Kendo in that case. All right, so in this case, Kendo is working and is giving us actually two emails. So I'm just going to grab, copy that across. In this case, I would actually add a line and take his personal email across as well. Just purely because it's valuable information. Let's look at Dimitri. And we'll look at his email. Okay, and it's telling us it can't find James and it can't find Dimitri. Let's have a look if Apollo will find it. Okay, so Apollo found it. So that's why the, there's value in using a few different ones. So that's Dimitri Kasdan. And let's look at James. See if Apollo finds it. Actually back here. James, it's unverified. But it's guessed. Okay, if we can find the other two then oops. We'll go to James Thomas. Okay, let's pull their profile names in.
and we'll pull in and there we go okay so um, essentially I mean you can see how time consuming that is I think once you have a system in place it'll be a lot smoother and a lot faster you'll know which tools you prefer which ones are working for you switching in and out of the different profiles will become easier using whether it's a free account or a paid account will become just more natural for you just to summarize the tool that I find easiest and best is Apollo purely for its versatility the fact that you can either create a list inside of Apollo and just use that or you can use Sales Navigator and be scraping data from here and then saving it back to Apollo whether that's one by one or in bulk but now you can see that we've now got a list of decision makers we've got multiple decision makers within each company that we can refer to we all we need to do now is to validate this list and be setting this up for cold emailing. I hope that was a little bit helpful. Do reach out and ask any questions if you have any questions about how to do this for yourself or any of the tools. But that brings us to the end of this training and I look forward to seeing you in the next training. Thanks.